All right. So um, my thumbnail sketch, and I know some people take a shortcut and don't bother because they figure it takes a long time. But you do resolve a lot of issues by doing a little preliminary sketch. And one of the things that I was conscious of was um, there's there's no depth in this picture. There's no lines where you you know you look distance of a field or the angle of a barn or something like that. So we're not we're, we're not having this sort of uh, uh, get any perspective. Um, and it's a tangled mess in here. And what you want to do is just shade the air, squint your eyes and sh shade the areas that you think look dark. And then uh, leave the white areas white. Um, the other tricky thing about this picture is that we have a white vase or urn against a white background. Well, that's uh, you know like painting a cow in a snowstorm or something like that. White cow in the snowstorm. How, how do you do it? So I, I, as I look at this picture, I, I see that I can see the vase. So the background is going to be a little bit darker than the vase. But I've decided I don't want a dark background or even a slightly toned background all the way up in the top because painting around all these flowers and stuff would just get kind of crazy. So there will be some shadow shapes down here, and you want to kind of keep them interesting. Um, so that's part of the design, the design thinking. Um, I've got a little, little bit of a demonstration thing here. Let's see. When you're doing flowers, if you do flowers, even dandelions, and you have them like lollipops, uh, it doesn't look all that natural. I've got this as being two separate. If you, if you clump them together, and allow one to run into another, you get a more interesting shape. So in our picture with the lilies, those purple shapes sometimes will run together, one flower into another. Um, and if you can keep the shapes kind of irregular, the more variety you get, like large, small, medium, the more variety you get, the more interesting they look. So there's some cases in this in this drawing where I'm I'm gonna I may add a pink flower in there where there might not be one if I think it needs it you know um, <clears throat> yeah let's see here's, here's another example Ned I have one question about sure. about the about the whole thing and that is the other thing that struck me about this and I'm having a hard time with it I actually drew drew something in is this is an urn like on some sort of there doesn't seem to be a, a line in the back. The That's wall. right. It's against it's against a white wall. Yep. But and there's no table that you can see. You can see a hint of a table at the bottom. It's on. A, it's on. No. No. It's it's on a like a stool. Right. And I found that that you know I found I felt the need to put in a table for some reason. Well, if you want to put a if you want to put a horizontal line across the bottom and have have the urn sit on a table. That, have at it, you know. Um, you can you can make those adjustments. So here's one more picture of flowers. Um, here's <clears throat> two lilies overlapping each other, create a pretty interesting shape. In out in out. <clears throat> Whereas, you know, this one's irregular, but it, it it's almost like a starburst, and it gets kind of tedious. Um, oh, there's Kathy Selecki. Um, the same with tulips. Um, if you do clumps of tulips, they're more interesting than trying to pick, paint one after the other after the other. So well, that's sort of a design thing. Try to group your, your shapes together to create interesting shapes. All right. And I think the, the homework <clears throat> um, was to mix some grays using a blue a red or a reddish brown and a, and a yellow, red, yellow, and blue. And we're gonna need to have some gray colors down here. So it's helpful to kind of know what your go-to colors are for your grays. All right, well, so those are, uh, okay. So I think I'm getting ready to get some 
Go. I did, I have to remind you, please, please squeeze out fresh color so that um, you, you, you're not dipping your brush into something that's either hard from last week, dried up or sticky. And it's very hard to get the color to come alive and to spread it around. Um, so before I start, could I ask all, everyone to mute themselves? It was nice chatting at the beginning, but um, um, if someone coughs or a dog barks, it, it, the picture will jump to that living room or, or kitchen. So um, if you can mute yourselves, except for except and uh, pin pin this picture, it will be in good shape. <coughs> Bill, are you set? No, that's all right. Um, okay. <coughs> all right. Uh, Unlike the landscape paintings where I threw in a whole lot of water over the sky and let it dribble down into a <clears throat> little bit of foreground, I'm, I'm gonna take a different approach. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in a few areas and I'm gonna hit my pale colors first as they blop around here. My darker colors, the greens down here, I'm gonna put in nearer the end. They're gonna, they're gonna bump up against the uh, the lighter colors. Okay, too much talking. <clears throat> and I do have to get sort of my own zen-like feeling. Okay, I'm gonna touch some water at the inside of a couple of these lilies. And I think I've already decided that this, this lily here is going to be my main actor. I don't even know who won the Academy Awards last night. Mm -hmm. um, do you know? No Man Land? No Man Land? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a little bit of... <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of the... Oh, he did? 80, 82 years old or whatever? Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of the aureole and I'm just going to drop it in here. And you may not even on the screen see that I'm getting any yellow. It's just like the middle parts of the lily. And because I'm dropping it into a watery area, I'm not getting any real sharp edges. I'm not, I just want that bleed of yellow. And if I do have a sharp edge like there, I'm gonna put a little water over it. Okay, what are the three lilies there? I guess I'm not, not missing any. <clears throat> yeah, okay, good. Okay, now, as I, as I said, I was gonna go, um, we're gonna get some uh, pink flowers and we get a little bit of permanent rose. There we go. Uh, which pink flower is this? Okay, a lot of water on there because it's, it's a, not a very pale pink. So I'm gonna just blop some water here. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the outside edges of this pink flower. I see pink up here. But again, I'm just making a blob of pink. I think I see some pink up here. Now that edge, I'm gonna go around my lily, but the rest of it is gonna be pretty irregular. And where else do I have some pink? <clears throat> What's above this? I'm gonna go purple in there. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna wait. Okay, so I've got the, got the pinks going. Now I'm gonna get the purple. I'm going to use the cerulean blue with the permanent rose that I already have. Ooh, I got two. Now I need to get it more blue. Whoops, I just bumped the camera. All right. So you see, I keep fussing around until I get it right. Okay, here, purple. Boom. All right, that's a nice bluish purple. I'm going to go around this lily with this purpley color. And the edges of this, oh, I don't even know what the names of these flowers are. The edges are gonna make these pointed prickly shapes. And now one purple flower is bumping into another. I don't, yeah, do you see it? Yeah, above that, above that lower lily. So a sharp edge around the petals. And then I get into, God, Lord. Those little white, blue, those little bell-shaped flowers. Oh God! I guess I'm going to paint around some of those. 
Yeah, really. <laughs> What's that? You were saying, oh, God, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> well, it's only appropriate I say, oh, God, this was the Easter bouquet at our church. So I, oh, I guess I'm going to, well, my, where, where do I want to, where do I want purple again? Oh, there's purple up here, I think, right? Um, underneath that one, no. Uh, Some up here, you know. If if I put in a flower that's not there, it's not the worst thing. I just want to make sure I don't cut into my lily shapes. I want to keep those. This is hints of purple. Boom, boom. What's underneath there? That's another thing. A little something up here. All right, what are we, what are, is there any more colors down below here? Yeah, but I'll, put, I'll put another pink in down here somewhere. All right, so I'm just blobbing these things in. All what right. color did you use for the pink? The pink I'm using pink. A, a permanent rose, though you could also use a very pale alizarin crimson if you don't have permanent rose. <laughs> Could you use uh, a Windsor red? What's that? Could you use a Windsor red for that? I didn't. I didn't. I used permanent rose, or I'm suggesting uh, a lizard and crimson. Uh, let's see that. I'm going to go a little bit. Well, oh, there's a little bit more I want to get before it dries up. Okay. Now, what am I going to do? Um, so we're in the sense Negative space. Right, I'm painting around those lilies. Now, the, these little puffy things, are these hydrangeas, Jennifer, these hydrangeas mm -hmm. down here? Yeah. Okay, they look white, but they have a little green cast. So I'm gonna get a little bit of Oriolan <clears throat> and a little bit of the cerulean. And I'm these little puff balls, I'm just gonna drop in they are just a little bit darker than the white of the lily. So I'm just gonna, I'm sort of killing the whites. We have another little cuff ball over here. There's another one down in here. Where else are they? I don't really see. Oh, I see a little pink over here that I want to put in. Got too, too bright. See how it looked. So I just give now, me the water. And now I, I was looking down when you mixed the that like yellowish green. What would, what were you using? There was Oriolan and uh, cerulean. Cerulean. <clears throat> cerulean is a really very pale blue. All right, so I got some color. I just sort of feel like I need some purple up there. You know, if I feel like I want purple up there, I'll put purple up there. You know. Okay. All right. Now <clears throat> I'm going to do the uh, the forsythia fronds, and then I'm going to stop and let you guys paint. Though some of you may have started already. Um, I'm going to take the the new the Oriolan and the new gamboge. The new gamboge is a little bit darker red, uh, yellow, and I'm going to now just dot. These little things. Is my hand okay? You can see it. Sometimes my hand covers what I'm painting. So okay, so um, I, I see the spine that goes out. I'm really not paying a lot of attention to the original here, the, the photograph. I'm just going out the, and I'm jumping, and I will fill in the. Oops! What happened? Who froze? Okay, I'm still I'm still no. going here. Did I my thing froze? No, no, no. no I'm going. Okay. The zoom is the zoom connection over here is slow. Oh. Okay. This is kind of a, a this one's a sort of. There's a sort of a tr 
triangle of, of things coming out here. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. All right. Let's <clears throat> go. Exactly. Okay, there's a lot of yellow right there. Boom. It's All right. And in some of these forsythia fronds, the it's there's more yellow at the ends of it. And then little bits as the stem goes toward the toward the uh, the, the bouquet itself. Do you, do you see how I've got that? I, I'm jumping they're, they're like footprints in the snow or something. Um, Boom, Something boom. tells me you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> we did it last week, didn't we? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, We're done here. <laughs> boom, boom. Little, I'm having fun just flicking, using my brush to flick out these little pieces of yellow. I don't see them. So, Ned, I saw five of the lilies in the bouquet. Did you stick with three for design Lord, reasons or? Oh, yeah, there's one up there. I got one, two. Yeah, there's a, yeah. there's one. There's one there's that's one kind of on top of that third one. Yeah I, yeah, I just didn't see it very well. And somehow, so it does, so keeping to odd numbers, but. Yep, yes. Or, yep. It's okay, good. Okay, now. Mm, Nope, that's not, that, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, and before I start, while the, while the yellow is still wet, I'm going to use the same brush, grab a little bit of burnt sienna, which is my, you know, it's sort of my reddish brown. And I'm going to start to just, I'm not going to draw it like I'm drawing a line. I'm going to put a little bit up to there, stop. Go a little along there, stop. Go a little along there, stop. And so I'm just hinting at the structure that's holding these. And because uh, it's hitting the yellow while it's still wet, it sort of blends into the yellow. I like I like that. Um, here we go. Can, oh, you can't see it. Okay, here we go. There, there. There, there, there. Maybe I'll make another one off to the side. And like I say, it's good to get these in and let them blend. Otherwise they can look like twigs later on. All right, how are we doing? Did I get them all? Kind of look. You know, these, these paintings should look, if I pause, they should look interesting at different stages. Like I've got a little bit of color everywhere. It's all light. I don't have anything down at the bottom, but I have a nice, like right now it's looking interesting. I mean, I'm kind of happy with it, all right? Um, <clears throat> okay, nothing more in here I need to do. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Um, and I'm gonna let you guys uh, do some, just splash some color around. Um, remember, we're gonna, we're gonna make the edges of your flowers, the ones in the middle, we're gonna, put a dark green around them. So don't worry so much about the shapes of those colors or those flowers. Ned? Yeah. This is the time I really wish I could be there in person because I'm looking at mine, I'm looking at yours, I'm going, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> it doesn't look like yours. Um, <laughs> this, the, I don't know if this really will work. Look at my, can you see my purple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and it's not, it looks, it's not flowing like yours is. And I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. Well, you know, <clears throat> um, too many strokes. Okay. You're, you're dabbing too much in there. Just put a, put a few strokes in and leave it, you know? Okay. Um, that's, that's the kind of thing. Yeah. Because I'm going, I'm trying to do what he's doing, but I guess I'm overworking it, right? A little bit, a little bit. Okay. Thank you. That helps me. As I've said before, uh, painting in watercolor is like golf. The more strokes you take, the worse you're playing. 
I had heard that before. Yeah, so you tell Rob that, all right? <laughs> I will, I will, but I know overworking things is a problem for me. <laughs> And you can use a tissue to blot out a couple spots there um, just to give it some a modeled look or irregular look. Just imagine the trauma when you have to deal, you have to you have to paint each of the little little uh, seed pods in the in the uh, stamens. That is that's like dessert. That's the last, those are the last three strokes we do, you know. Don't freak out about that. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't because they're, the stamens are dark. So you can paint right over everything. You, you'll just make some of your darkest marks right on top of dry paint. That yes, but if you have the need to, to paint around them, it's very hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ned, can you remind me what color you used for the stems of the forsythia? I, I, I used two different yellows. I used my aureolin and the new, new gamboge. So you used the, the same color as you did, you used like a little darker color to make the, the actual stem? <clears throat> and then I used the burnt sienna to make the stem. Burnt sienna, okay, great, thanks. <clears throat> Ned, did you switch to a smaller brush for the stem or just use the tip of the same one you were using? Uh, I get kind of lazy about changing brushes. I was using the same big one, but yeah, I would recommend going to a slightly smaller brush. Okay. What color did you use for the high green hydrangeas? Uh, I use a little bit of Oriolan with um, cerulean blue, but I, you really want to keep it pale. It's just, it's just the other side of white. Ned, are you going to do, you're going to leave the background completely white? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be really hard to paint around those forsythia fronds to make a, a background color. So I, no, I've decided the top part is definitely going to be white.
And what color are you using for those for Scythias? Uh, two, two yellows, a little bit of new gamba, a little bit of aureolin with some new gamba. Yeah, what what the, the game is to create hard and soft edges. If uh -huh. if your flowers are all blurry, like a, like a big sea sponge, that's not very interesting. But if one edge is sharp and another edge is blurry, then that kind of looks that kind of looks fun. <clears throat> And I guess design-wise, I've been I've been told, or so I'll pass it on to you. You want to have your some of your sharpest edges near your focal point, and then have more diffuse diffuse things further away in 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 inconsequential areas. Now that's really hard to keep all that in your head as you're just trying to get the paint oh, to mix. <laughs> All right, I'll give you, a, yeah, go ahead. I, um, I'm trying so hard to, it's, it's very hard. I, I have a heavy hand, I know that. And so as I'm looking and I'm trying to watch, is it literally how lightly you, you touch it or is it all, also the amount of water that you have? Um, well, yeah, it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit of both. Um, you don't, you don't want to have so much water that the thing ends up being big droplets all over the place that will never never dry in, in an hour. Um, I think I think when I did the forsythia, it was a fairly um, dry. It was it was a mixture of yellows, but it wasn't very watery. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> It's like in a recipe, what's the difference between a pinch and a dash? <laughs> like a pinch of salt or a dash of salt? <laughs> how do you describe what, how much you're putting in? Is a dash bigger? Less? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on. Um, to put in some light greens. As I squint my eyes at this picture, um, I see a lot of light greens in the upper half, and then I see darker greens in the lower half. So, uh, uh, light greens. Okay, I'll do, I'll do some light greens. Maybe, oh, okay. So, uh, again, Oriole, or, you know, if I use aureolin before for my for Scythia and uh, for some yellow in here, I'm going to keep using aureolin when I start to make greens. I'm going to use the aureolin this time and the cerulean. No sense in jumping to a cadmium or another yellow because that will make the colors a little disparate. If, you, if you've got a color, a couple of colors that are working, uh, it'll harmonize better if you keep using a little bit more limited palette. Okay, now where am I going here? Okay, uh, I'm going to put some green up here. I'm going to cut around this lily so I can see that lily shape pop out. And I'm not going to get into that red too much. Now I'm going to paint. This is nasty. 
I am going to paint around these Snapdragon things. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Let's see. What do I got now? Okay. Um, Oops, I gotta really watch it. I can't just splash around. Okay, here's, here's the edge. They have come on in here. I'm doing the edge of my lily. I really, I gotta keep that sharp. And notice how the lily now is standing out up here, right? There's that. I have a little bit of yellow down the screen down here around the other leaf. Wow, what's what is that thing? I may put another. Well, I'm not going to do now. Um, but when I stop my grains, I got to figure out. Well, what is it, what's it bumping up against? Well, it's some of those little bell. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to I'm going to do this as a, this is big green frond going up through here. It's almost like a big forsythia, but it's not forsythia. I don't know. I can see through it in a few places. I don't want to go around go around my lily there. I'm going to be really careful. Ned, Just what is that. the blue? Ned, what's the blue you use with the Oriolum? I've to got, uh, today I've got uh, um, uh, cerulean. Got it. Thank you. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to throw some down here. Oh, spot that I don't like. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to put another pink thing in here. Boom! Just decided I didn't want to have the greens go too far. Okay, now I'll go back to my greens. Oops, green. Okay, I'm gonna, here's my major major lily down here. I'm gonna go around the leaves. And you're starting to see it step step out. And we have some darks down there. I'm not gonna worry about them now. Uh, let's see underneath this lily. I got some some more greens. Can you see, if you look at the screen right now, can you just see how the lilies are now starting to stand out? The star shapes of them, okay? Yeah. Now, the greens are making kind of... All right, I'm gonna... Put a little something, let's say there's a, some, some sort of green thing that's coming out this way and going down. So I'll do that. I don't want to have this green shape be too big though. So anytime I'm not happy, I just let's just throw another pink flower in there. There, I've done that. And this is sometimes where I'm looking at my painting and not at the photograph. I'm just looking at the painting going, I got too much green right here. So I'm just throwing in some more colors. All right. Now I do have some greens down here, some pale greens. I'm just doing the pale greens right now and I will get to the darker ones later. In fact, the darker ones may go over the pale ones. But Ned, those are darker greens up above, right? Up there, but then I got some real dark ones down here Woody, at the bottom, right above the edge of the urn. Okay, but it's all the same, it's all that same mix of cerulean and- Yeah, when I get when I get to my real dark greens, I'm gonna get 
I'm going to use uh, Ultramarine. It Got just it. covers. It covers better. Okay, these so are a couple of things. Okay. Watches, I see. Yeah. Okay. Different tones of different values of t of water. Yep. Yep. Of the same water. Got it. Thanks. All right. Um, I'm gonna. This is. This was not a long little little demo here. So I'm gonna sort of stop. But I, I want you. To, I I like. You know, right now it's. It, I can kind of see where things are going. Um, I've got dark still to put in. And I'm kind of look at the whole thing. Do I have a balance here? I kind of do. Get a little more light greens down here. And I'll wait to do those dark. All right. So keep keep on going. Just just make sure you don't go over those lilies. You start splashing the brush around all of a sudden you go, oh, whoops, I just lost a point of a lily. And that's really hard to get that back. Yeah, I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking when the point of the lily is going, oops. And then there is something, and, and we've done, the, Woody knows this, there's something called Chinese white, which at the end of the day, it's like putting Colgate toothpaste on your on the white areas that you've overpainted and you can put it on and it looks like white again. So there are ways to get the white back. An emergency band-aid, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. I'm gonna change water. Um, I, don't, I don't like getting my water too, too muddy. Uh, it just muddies up my later colors. So I'm gonna take a break here. <clears throat> Ned? Yeah. Do you ever <laughs> go through and where you've um, painted over, kind of go, um, this lily has one less petal, um, <laughs> you know, uh, then just kind of go from the, you know, asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you go, um, I don't know if there's any coming back from that, that maybe this there's not another, or do you just go ahead and try to rescue it? Yeah, I don't, what, what do you mean? You painted over one, one, one uh, leaf of a lily? Major, yeah, your major lily, the, the focal point, I yep. accidentally, the, the bottom right one where there's two, I put green over that by mistake. Okay, so, well. Should I try? And lift it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you if you take a, a brush, yeah, maybe one of your firmer brushes. I, I use. Here, I'll put it on the camera. I use this. Um, oh uh, yeah, flat. And if I if if I put that on my green and I rub it, and then put a paper towel down, I can I can pick up most of the. Okay. Most of that color. So it's worth. What you'll need to do later oh. after it all dries, we'll make a darker edge. Okay. around the lily uh, to make it stand out. But especially since that's the focal point lily, I want to go ahead and try to save that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. You know, my, my friend appreciates it. Let's 
Let's say this is kind of Let's say this is either that's a really dark color. Right now, it's a very pale. Don't paint there until I have a I can put charts on like that. Now, like the other thing is that it's working. And maybe one class should be everyone brings in their old watercolors and we figure out how to fix all the different areas. Mm -hmm. And then it's okay if there's areas where the white, you, you're not completely covering the white with the green, right? I mean, I see little places where the, the perfectionist in me wants to go in and make sure that white isn't peeking through, but you left that on purpose. You mean in, in other places besides the lilies? Yeah, yeah, in the green, you know, like you didn't make sure that was co totally covered. Right. I'm still trying to get a little hint of those snapdragons in there. I'm not sure that's going to work. Okay. Or at least a botanist wouldn't wouldn't recognize them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you find that the mistakes turn into different projects. Mistakes make art. No. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's check. Yep. <clears throat> I had a photo teacher years and years ago. He said, "Mistakes are your friends." Mm -hmm. All right, let's so uh... Let's move to the next step.
what's the what's the one part of the painting we haven't touched yet? The vase. The vase. Yep. Put the back Wait, yeah. did I miss the dark greens above the vase? No, we haven't done those yet. Oh, okay. So I, it's always good to do um, light colors and then put dark colors on top. So we're going to do the vase. Whew, we don't want to make it too dark either. And then we'll put those dark greens, with those little leafy things coming down. We'll put that over a dry vase. All right. So. <laughs> uh, all right. The vase. All right. Um, I'm going to. We had a little color mixing exercise to make gr make grays. I'm going to use. <clears throat> I'm going to use cerulean. I'm going to try this cerulean alizarin, which I haven't used yet. Whoa. And then maybe a little bit of raw sienna. All right. Throw that. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. I kind of like that. All right. Here is the, the vase. And I am sensing that the Gotta go around that little hydrangea thing. Mm. Mm. Good. All right. I'm gonna come down here. Uh, I'm feeling like the light is coming from my right across this way. So this side of the vase is gonna have this slight, right, right now it's kind of pinkish gray. I'm gonna put a little bit of a curve there. And I'm gonna go just go right across there. Do you see how I, I, you have this feeling of light hitting that darn thing? All right, now here's the inside of this handle, which is so hard to draw. Just doing the inside of it to leave the outside wrapped in this. So I can pick that color up. There's that. Now the other side is over here. Yeah. I'm gonna get a little more blue into it. Uh, there's another section down below here, and then we get this stem. A diagonal line across there. Uh, ooh, the front of this is, is light, so I will leave that for now. I reserve the right, the right to change it later. Okay, so there's the urn a little bit there. Uh, I don't like the very sharp edge here, so I'm taking pure water, uh, just mushing it so I don't have a sharp edge there. Same with this. Ooh, a little bit of water right there so that I go gradually from white into that pinky gray. That looks too dark, too light. So I'm going to go right with that. There's that urn. I can't, I got to keep going here. Uh, I'm going to do this, these edges of this. Urn. Uh, Okay, I, I, I've done the urn. Now, just stay with me. I'm not. I'm going to do some. Start working some dark greens up above, and then by the time I get down below, that urn should be dry. So here we go. I'm going to get ultramarine blue. Ooh, wow! Some alizarin. <clears throat> That's a dark green. Okay, so a few areas where I want my police to stick out.
All right, down underneath here. And this dark green is gonna go right up against the purple flower. And this is just ultramarine and alizarin? Ultramarine and, uh, no, I've got dark green, so it's ultramarine and uh, aureolin right now. So I'm going around, I'm trying to make this purple flower stick out by putting some darks around it. But then I'm gonna make these darks be the left side of this thing, whatever it is going up. All right, there's that. Come in there. Okay, a little more dark. Oh, there's a good. The new gamboge with the blue is even darker. Be careful, it can get kind of muddy. But I'm trying to give you a sense of one purple flower and then a separate one. So I'm, as I go into the purple flower, I'm making these little pointy shapes. You see how that purple flower has some... And down here, down here. Oh, lost it on that. Sometimes my my monitor just gets tired and it poops out. So okay, so I want to get some dark greens out here, <clears throat> and this is like doing your forsythia again. You're going to go out. Come on, come on. Let's get this dark. It's, and Oh, look, these come down. This is kind of fun. The way these come down and droop. Droop, droop, droop. Okay, purple flower, pink flower, a dark. That's a shadow back there. All right, how are we doing? It looks pretty good on that side, but now I got to go on the other side. And let's bring out the lily here. I'm going around a pink flower. Okay, let's see. Oh boy. Come on, a little dark. A little dark accent there. And I'm making some circle shapes around those those little snapdragons. Oh god, those things are just nasty. Uh, I'm trying to watch the snapdragon, but then I don't want to cut into my pink flower over here, so I'm going to make an edge into the pink flower. All right, uh, let me look back at the picture and. Now, look at the darks down here. Now, 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 that came out okay. Maybe a few more accents of darks up here. You see how I'm, I'm jumping around with my brush, I'm just touching things. Okay, now down here, this is, this is, this is critical here. I'm gonna get a little bit of, Blue, I'm getting a little bit of lizard and crimson. Lizard and crimson is a 
red, so it makes the green darker. Red is the opposite of green. So this, we're gonna start, and this will be around these little hydrangea things. So I gotta have these little very irregular, I find this very difficult. Okay, I'm just trying to make that, it's like, it's like the outside of a Rice Krispie, you know, it's got a really funny texture. Okay, good, 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 I like this. All right, let's go around this one. Don't leave any whites around there. Go around there. There's a big, big dark leaf right here, coming right across and down. Now I'm, be, I'm able to paint my some greens over the urn. So these things coming down, this is a leaf. And this is, oh, look how the notice of the leaf makes the edges of this pink. When I'm really concentrating, I can't talk because it's two sides of the brain. Okay, this is gonna come down. Mess this up yet. Don't mess this up. How about some darks up above? Going around those snapdragons up here. against the pinks. Okay, step back, take a look. Are we starting to see how the greens are starting to outline and, and sharpen the flowers here? Okay, I'm gonna pause right there. That was a, that was a, that was a lot of stuff. I did the urn not too long there with some grays, and then I put in these dark greens, try to keep a balance. Uh, while you guys start painting, I may put in a few more greens in other areas, but I, I wanna keep, keep you guys are anxious to paint. These ultramarine is the is the blue that gets a really dark green.
Okay, it's all right. So after the gray elevation, what else did you do more? I did some dark, dark greens up around. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of another area we haven't touched, and that is the, the shapes behind the urn. And I had to let the urn dry before I could put shadow shapes in there. Um, and if you look at the photograph, there's kind of a, a double image. There's some shadows way down here, and then there's some darker shadows in close. And you kind of got to figure out what you're, uh, and you want the shadow shapes to be interesting. So I am going to, <clears throat> so the shadow is going to be darker than the urn, but not as, certainly not as dark as some of the uh, dark greens here. All right, grays. Okay, so this is, you know, we're not going to look at that and say it's blue or red. Uh, it's going to be some sort of gray. So I'm going to mix a little uh, ultramarine blue, which is always good for shadows. It's a, a cool color. A little touch of alizarin, because I've used that before in the urn. Okay, and then I'm going to need a little bit of, I guess I'm going to go to the raw sienna. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. Now that's not, I put it down, it's not dark enough. So I gotta go a little bit more of that color, that color, that color. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna look at this. And I'm gonna, okay, now let's be careful here. We're gonna go around this handle. Boom. Okay, is that darker than the urn? Yeah. I'm gonna go up against these leaves here. Do, 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 do. 
And then some of these flowers have shadows on the background. So I'm going to connect. Come on. Here's where I run out of the color just when I get it right. All right, I see irregular. So the same irregular shapes you have in the in the leaves. Here we go. Boop, boop, boop. The same irregular shapes you have with some of the leaves you're going to have in the shadow because the leaves are casting those shadows. You want to keep this interesting. Come on. Now I'm sensing that my, my shadow shape is getting too much of one color. It is monotone. Come on. Come on. And I'm going to put a little more red into it just to keep it interesting. Boom, 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 boom. Design wise, come on. Make it, make this, this is going to be a big shape coming down here. Come on, blue. I'm going to come in and cut around this. Come on. Diana, fewer strokes. Come on, try to do it in one or two big. I should be using maybe a bigger brush. Gonna go around this base. And I don't want too much of a hard edge down that sharp edge, keeping it interesting. Take that through there. Okay, and I got don't forget the little hole inside. The handle. So Ned, I'm having an epiphany. The shadow really doesn't have a lot. It, it can be darker in a shadow, but basically it doesn't change color, but in a watercolor, you're free to do anything. Sure. Yeah. And you want to around this thing. You just want to have a little little luminescence, you know? So I'm mm -hmm. adding some, some raw sienna in here. I'm going to go right over these fronds, right over that. Okay, come on, be careful, man. They got to be, pay attention. Uh, okay, this is, these are, Inside there. And the shadow shouldn't be a color where you go, oh yeah, look at that purple shadow. You know, if, it's, if someone says that, that means you hit it too much with one color. It's supposed to be a neutral, a non color. And this. By putting something here, it makes my vase stand out. Can you look, look at the vase now. Can you see on the screen how the vase is now standing out? Wow, I should have used one of my huge, those brushes that I use for skies. I should have used, okay, I just threw a bunch of blue on here. Now, what is that? Okay, I'm gonna. I want to keep the shapes interesting. The shadow shapes have to be, what, is, what am I doing here? What, what, what was I thinking? So my, I'm going to have more shadow on this side than on the other side, just not for any reason, it's because. Even though that's not the way the photo is, you're just designing. Right, I'm just sort of deciding that I, I got to keep this, have some sort of interesting shape. And I don't want to go too far up here because then I'm going to start, be stuck doing the whole damn thing. Okay, um, the, the urn has lost some of its three dimensionality. So I'm going to add another tone on some of these. Part of that urn, get a little, accent there. Oh yeah, there's a definite low. Right 
underneath the urn itself or the edge of the urn, there are some shapes of these flowers coming down and creating, creating shadows. Okay, now, what am I doing? Ooh, that's a really sharp line. All right, that's looking okay. I may have gotten it a little bit too dark right there. Back. And now <clears throat> the lilies are very flat. I'm going to put some shadow shapes on parts of them so that they are not like a white cutout. So you know, this is what I was showing you before. So that lily now has a little bit of shadow shape on the, on some parts of its petal. You can see how the, the, the you can, can you see how the lily now is looking more three-dimensional? You can do the same thing up here. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just one side of that leaf I'm gonna make dark or, or just a shadow. A little bit of that, a little bit of this. A little bit, of, yeah, it is scary. A little at the bottom edge of this one. And the bottom edge of this one, yep, yep. And the last lily, that one's, the whole bottom is dark. Hmm. So now the lilies are 3D and I'm gonna do a little bit of accents in the purples because the purples have a little center thing in there. Uh, well, I basically used the same brush the entire painting. There's the center of this purple going out to there, or to there, or to there. There. Just a few lines to indicate the, uh, the petals or whatever that. And then the same with the pinks. I'm going to grab my mm, permanent rose. And there's a little center spot that's dark. Okay, so I sort of touched up those things. Here's this. Again, I'm not outlining every single petal here. I'm trying not to. But just giving you hints. All right, and a little bit, a little bit of an orangey one up here. Oh, and there's, there's another red one down here. I've lost my monitor picture. No, no, I, I gotta pay. It, 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 it kind of goes into sleep mode. Oh, that's an adjustment design here. Yeah, that's right. You can make it stay longer. Yep. All right. And probably I got a couple, couple more dark green accents to put in. I think I want to add some green down here. Ellen, are you still with us? Yes, I'm still here. I'm still struggling <laughs> in struggling in many ways. 
All right. Oh, I thought this was going to be an easy one this week. No, no. None of them, oh, are, no. really, none oh, of them no. are really easy, but. So we should, do a, we should do a portrait next week? Oh, please, no. <laughs> we beg of you, no. <laughs> All right. I did leave a few whites in the middle. They, they don't look too bad. They're so tiny. They look like those uh, uh, snapdragons. Uh, maybe a couple, oh, I know. A couple of these, um, a couple of these fronds here, they've sort of lost their, their, I'm putting a little bit of, a little bit of dark blue over the stems to get them back. Give me a couple of dark accents. A couple of dark accents in the, Forsythia, because I the Forsythia is starting to look pale for me. See, I was wondering about that because I, I because of my heavy hand, I was trying to go super light. So those aren't the accent, but you need that for what the balance? I just I, they were just looking just a little insipid. They just need a little little dark. To, the darks make the yellow look brighter. So by putting a couple little accents of these. Dark stems. Do you see how it makes the it does. The yellow pop? It makes it pop. It makes it, it pop. It does. And, and I didn't know if I wanted to do that um, because my. But you're using that to draw their eye to the lilies. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, yeah. Oh. Oh. I know. Well, then we all were freaking out about the stamens. I'll, I'll, that'll be my last thing. I just do that. Let me get a smaller, slightly smaller brush. Uh, ultramarine is dark. Alizarin is dark. You, know, you don't want to have a lot of a lot of um, water on your brush. So here's a, a stamen. Boop. Are they okay? Down. And then a little teeny line. Ooh. Try it on the big one. Here we go. There it is. I think it needs a little bit of yellow in there. Um, and another one. Okay, three is good for that. This one has a boat, boat load of them up here. That looks good. I don't want them too dark, but they do. They do make the, the white of the lily pop out by having a couple of those little dark accents. And a little bit of the yellow glow is still the first strokes I put on are still holding, it's still coming through. So that's kind of nice. Those shadow shapes help make the leaves less cut out. Again, I guess this is looking okay down here. Oh, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill a little bit more of a, I got too much white, there's too much white at, down at the bottom. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kill some of that. Not all of it. I have a little bit of a, a shadow across there. Shadow across here, line across there, line across there. Yeah, just just killed some of that white down there. I'm keeping the white on this side though. All right, and I think I think I'll call that quits. <laughs> Now, 
Ned, I'm looking at that shadow and because watching you work with it, I'm wondering if I should take one of my large mop brushes and practice. You might, it, you know, it's like a couple of, a couple of fewer strokes would have been better, but. Um, okay. And since yeah. that, that's my tendency. Yeah. Um, yeah. A larger one and. Yeah. And just when, yeah. When you're using the mop brush, be careful when you're going around the edge because you don't want to jump into your okay. burn. But uh, okay. it, it, it holds the water better for sure. And it might get me fewer strokes. Yep, yep. My gray turned out pretty pink or purple. Your what did? My gray on the uh, vase. Oh, on the earth. Yep, yep. Yep. Just well, it's kinda... okay. I mean, it, it can be any color. It just, the urn just has to be a little lighter than the background to make it stand out. Okay. And as, as usual, I will try to remember when we close up today to take a picture of this and my finished painting to send to you. It'll be clearer than the Zoom picture. Are you going to um, work on that? I don't think so. Should I do the record, finish the recording? Oh, okay. I will get it. Because a lot of times you get it, you send it on a low price. Oh, I probably do. Oh, so this is what it looks like. Oh. So just disregard what you see over there. <laughs>